Fresh off the international break and we're back at the bends against the crew. How can we get all three points? We discuss next. What's going on Five Strike fam? I'm AJ, this is Mark. This segment is sponsored by Mojitos Bistro. Mojitos at the Forum, where you can find a slice of Miami and Havana right here in Atlanta. They offer Cuban cuisine made with recipes from their mom's cookbook. And check out their watch party on September 18th for the match against FC Cincinnati. They'll be giving away a beer for each Atlanta goal scored. Joseph helps a lot with that. For more on the awesomeness at Mojitos, check our description box below. Welcome to a match preview special. It's the business end of the season, and as we sit in third, there are three valuable points that we must attain this weekend. And again, it's at the Benz. Yep. It's September 14th. It's against the Columbus crew who sit in 11th. And in their past six, they have drawn, I think, five. Yeah, I mean, five games. Only lost one, so maybe <laughs> their best run of the season. If you ever see those like moving charge MLS releases sometimes, the beginning of the season, Columbus is up here. And then they just die. It's a big old dip. I, yeah. I think it, it ha kind of has to correlate with uh, Federico Iguain and his injury yeah. being out for the season. Uh, and so, you know, you have that. You have kind of them not really finishing their chances really well as well. Yeah. Uh, they I had mean, a coaching change. You know, had a coaching change. Did it work out? Maybe, maybe not. They had, they've had a lot of injuries, though. I think that's been the main crux of, for them this season. Right. And so, you know, with that, that's, uh, you know, they're a team that we probably should put away. Yeah. But in that sense, it's a team that maybe could give us a run for their money because maybe they have something to prove. Yeah. Who knows? And especially with an uh, international break, they're all rested. There's maybe some energy that they could really give and give us a run for the money. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, business end of the season for them, they're probably not going to make the playoffs, mm -hmm. but, you know, there are players there who want to prove themselves, who want to prove that they should be there next season. Right. As, you know, Columbus Crew try to figure out what what to do this offseason. They so. could be spoiler, and so if, yeah. if we don't take it seriously, then we could be in some trouble. But uh, in that sense, though, for our last six, we've won four and lost two. So that's a uh, pretty decent form. Obviously, we lost against the Philadelphia Union this past match. Uh, I think, like we've mentioned during uh, Five Strike Weekly, at least me anyway, uh, there was a flurry of factors, uh, but I think you saw that there was that fatigue at the end of the match, yeah. but there also was uh, kind of switching off. And yeah. that's something that uh, cannot happen, I think, right. with this team. you. Uh, I don't think you usually see that, at least in this kind of really torrid stretch that we've had, uh, winning seven of eight yeah. with two trophies. So, you know. And I mean, listen, that was the last game of a pretty busy stretch there on the road, and they still created a number of chances. You yeah. know, they, you know, Atlanta could have won last game. It didn't go their way that time, you know. So, But I think that overall the play is pretty good, and yeah, we should absolutely put away the crew at home, especially since we've been rested, you know, yeah. you know, these guys haven't been too busy over this break, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and so getting into the standings of that, I mean, like we said, we're in third, they're in 11th, but some of the other factors in play are, like, who's playing, essentially? Yeah. And so you have NYCFC. Yeah. Yeah, they're home against the, the they're home against the Earthquakes, and then the Union are home against LAFC, so hopefully, you know, this weekend we gain some ground, but most importantly, we have to take care of business. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and the crew recently, they drew 1-1 against the Chicago Fire. You would kind of expect uh, that to be, I guess, kind of close in which it was, but, uh, yeah. you know, one of those teams probably should put away with one of the other ones, and, yeah, I mean, it's a kind of a, you know, mediocre scoreline at least right in that regard uh but us in our previous matchups against the columbus crew in 2017 we won two nil at home yeah we drew nil nil in yeah. the playoffs yeah. and then of course we got we, knocked out we know that happened set there. about that right. the better in 2018 <laughs> uh we won two nil away and yeah. three one at home yep yeah. And then in 2019, yeah. Yeah, the waterlogged match, the 2 0 loss, a uh, match that should, maybe should not have happened or at least he should have been stopped and suspended, mm -hmm. who knows. But uh, in the Open Cup, we went up there again. There was another delay, but we won 3 2. And mm -hmm. so we know there's not going to be any weather delays in this matchup. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, it's it's been a little bit up and down. I think, uh, you know, we've won in some uh, kind of 
serious matchups uh, yeah. in that regard. And also, you know, they finally pipped one over us in the regular season this uh, in 2019. And right. so in that sense, uh, you know, it's been kind of competitive to a regard. Yeah, I mean, even this fixture last year, it was 1-1 until uh, Tio goes on, a, on that amazing Maisie run for a goal. True. So, you know, I think that, you know, will they be competitive? I wouldn't be surprised if they were. I'm hoping that we put them away, but you never know. Yeah, exactly, but uh, hopefully that just uh, the absence of Iguain is such a major thing that they just cannot cope. Yeah. Uh, that would be excellent and in terms of creating their chances, then you know that would be fantastic if uh, they don't have a guy that can be their talisman. Yeah. But in terms of their strengths, uh, they don't have a ton, <laughs> uh, according to who scored. They uh, are good at protecting their lead. And so that's yeah. good for them in that <laughs> sense. Uh, that puts the onus on us to really make sure we grab an early lead. Yeah. And that we can, you know, probably in that sense, maybe put it away. Yeah. But uh, in terms of their weaknesses, they Oof. lack in finishing scoring chances. Yep. They are not very good at defending counterattacks. Avoiding fouling in dangerous areas. Yeah, very know. weak there. Yeah. And so, yeah. But they are a team that likes to play with their width. They attack down the right a good bit and they like to take some long shots. So Brad Guzan will need to be on his toes and make sure that he doesn't get caught out. Um, as he, I think, uh, as a couple of occasions this yeah. season it has been want to do. Yeah. Uh, and they're not very aggressive. They don't really like to press a whole ton and they rotate their first 11. And so it will be a kind of mystery who they will start. Yeah. But I imagine with this break, they will probably start their probably best 11. Yeah, so. included in that best 11 is uh, Pedro Santos. He's had a breakout season, 10 goals, 4 assists. He's really their talisman, yeah, especially since uh, Iguain's mm -hmm. gone now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zardes, he's been their main striker, uh, 11 goals, 2 assists. These pretty decent returns, you know, yeah. he's up there in goals. You know, he's dangerous. He scored against us last year. Right. So. And of course, they, uh, they got some reinforcements from us in Romario Williams. For their strike force and he has a return of one goal which is good uh but yeah i mean in terms of that uh they are you know they're lacking with that uh kind of at least european talent in uh, zach stefan right. who has moved on to fortuna at Dusseldorf, and so uh and apparently doing quite well and you know that's good for him because yeah I, if we're being honest i do covet a zach stefan <laughs> But that's a future future transaction. Very much ever longer were. in the future. If it ever were. Yeah. But uh, but in terms of uh, more keys to this game, uh, I think yeah, you know, we need to feed Joseph. Yeah. It's a big thing if we can uh, feed the guy who is on a 13 MLS or 13 straight MLS scoring streak. Um, so, you know, it's... Yeah, that, that would seem wise, right. You know? Yeah, I mean, but that's always been the MO of Atlanta, too, is feed Joseph, because yeah. you know he can put away his chances. And we have the yeah. players to, to yeah, feed to him. Yeah, to do that. And, uh, but the, the issue, to one sense also, is that no one else is in double figures. Yeah. They have a couple guys in double figures, so you can at least kind of spread the goals around. I think, you know, there's a lot of factors for why we don't have someone in that. Right. Point. Uh, in the double figures. But uh, yeah, we should attack on the counter since they are weak in that regard. Mm -hmm. And since they do like to play with that width, we need to make sure we defend our wings very well. And so, yep. uh, you know, ergo, you have the Justin Mirams and Julian Gressels of the world, and also our uh, center backs as well, yep. uh, who are a little bit on, more on the uh, right and left side of it. But um, yeah, and it's also, we need to bounce back with a strong performance. Yep after that loss against Union. Yeah, and that's something that uh, that in our short history, we've always done well, I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, especially, at, you know, you have the letdown and, you know, yeah, you bounce back quickly. You know what kind of team you are. You know you're better than that. And yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the last matchup against the Union was tough, but still, you know, this team wants to win every game, expects to win every game right. almost. So yeah, yeah, I expect them to come out with the, that, uh, that attitude that, you know, the wanting to take the game by the scruff early on. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, moving on to the injuries and unavailable players for Columbus. You have defender Milton Valenzuela, who has a torn ACL, who's been out since February. Um, you have Federico Higuain, who's been out for the season since May. Yeah. And Hector Jimenez, a defender who has a left knee injury. Yeah. He might be out, we don't know. Uh, so, also defender, yeah. Yeah, Waylon Francis, defender, he has a leg injury. Questionable is another defender, Josh Williams, a right thigh injury. Yeah, a lot of defenders on this list. Yeah, and so, you know, you, you kind of, you know, fancy your chances against a makeshift defense. Yeah. Uh, a, a defense that's 
pretty much been shipping goals, so that's a good thing. Yeah. In terms of Atlanta, it pretty much seems that Ezekiel Barco is kind of recovering from uh, the injury that he had that made him sit out against the Union and again uh, for the international duty that he had as well. Yeah. But, uh, and of course, Breck Shea is out for the season. Right. And that's mostly it. And so that's pretty good in that regard that we have pretty much our entire... Yeah, you know, and I, my gut squad. feeling is that uh, with Barco, that was more precautionary than anything mm -hmm. else. So, you know, I'm hoping that he'll be healthy and ready to go in time for Columbus. Yeah, hopefully so, because, yeah, we need... Uh, I think also in terms of not only winning this match, but kind of a goal difference type yeah. of game as well so mm -hmm. that we can make sure if there is a tiebreaker of sorts if we are uh, at the end of the day in the standings you know we have that in our toe right but uh getting into some of the match facts Atlanta United have won 10 of their last 11 home matches in MLS very strong numbers there yep. and yeah, uh, we Atlanta United has been winning at both half and full time eight of their last ten home matches. Pretty convincing at home. Mm -hmm. uh, they've scored at least two goals in their last eight home matches. That has to be some sort of record. I mean, like that's that's crazy. Well, not crazy, but I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's it's a testament to how well they've been playing the last couple of months. Yeah, sure. And, and uh, uh, they've yeah. been over two and a half goals scored in five of Atla of Atlanta United's last six home matches. So we expect the goals. I think there's yeah, there's gonna be goals scored. It's just a matter of. Uh, uh, hoping that it's Atlanta United who are at the end of those, putting right. it in the back of the net. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and so getting into that, uh, who might be scoring those goals, let's get into the predicted starting 11 for us. Let's yep. get in through the lines. Yep. Who do you have uh, between the six? Gotta be Barrett, gotta be Brad. Yeah, uh, you know, he the last match he had one go through his legs, so he probably wants to make up for that a little bit. But, yeah. yeah, Brad always. Indeed, as as always, uh, I think yeah, we're both going with the 3-5-2 as yeah. it's been, yep. or however you want to call it, but it's uh, pretty much 3-5-2, I, yeah. I think. But, yeah. Um, yeah, in the three-man center back line. We yeah, have... we've, we've got Escobar at the right center back. We have uh, Robinson in the middle and LGB back at his left center back position. So. Pogba doesn't start for us in this one, you know, and, you know, Escobar has been out uh, with injury and so on, but yeah. he's played the last few weeks. He seems to have recovered now, so mm -hmm. I think he's the first choice. Right. I think with a midweek match as well, I think you can probably see some rotation in that regard. Right. And so, uh, but I think, you know, this is more of the first choice, even though I think Pogba, I mean, he deserves a start, but he's just one of those guys that... I don't think you want to have him start every three days, and so you kind of try to minimize that already yeah. by uh, by not giving him that uh, that nod in the 11. But getting into the wing backs, I yep. think we alluded to it earlier, Gressel and Miram. Yep, I think uh, with them especially getting a rest, Miram did play for Iraq uh, on Thursday, played mm -hmm. 90 minutes, but that's uh, that's all his commitment. So he'll be right. back on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be rested, ready to go. You know, those uh, that the wing back position demands so much out of you, and so like right. Gressel alluded to being a little bit tired. So I expect him to come out, you know, aggressive on fire in this match. I think. Yeah, and he shouldn't be too tired from the Gressel Mania Golf Classic that he held. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he probably. Yeah, I think he did play the entire uh, entire eighteen. I think. Or, but they had golf carts, right? Yeah, was it they have golf carts? Either way, yeah. uh, he probably should be well rested by now. <laughs> yeah. By the you know, the Saturday match, at right. least anyway. Uh, Miram, yeah, there could be that some of that little bit of jet lag. I mean, it's uh, however many hours. Um, and But still, either way, uh, you know, I think this is the first choice. If not, then you can see a Pereira, uh, you know, coming in and spelling him, if not. And then him just, uh, you know, playing over uh, on uh, on Wednesday. Yeah. But uh, in the midfield, you have Remetti, I think, returning as well yeah. as Jonathan Nagby, who... Yeah, returning to 11 with that, oh, that just beautiful flick. That oh, he, man. He, uh, he had for Jose Martinez to so score good. that beautiful so team good. goal. Yeah. Um, yeah, you hope that, uh, yeah, he's healthy and uh, there aren't any problems there. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and, you know, I think this is where I think we differ a little bit in, yeah. in terms of that. It's just a matter of who's actually healthy. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think Barco, my gut feeling is that Barco is healthy enough and so he'll start this match. And I think, you know, especially with Atlanta wanting to come out on the front foot and really be aggressive. I think, yeah, Barco gets the start. However, however, yeah, I mean, there could be that thing where he is getting given extra rest against a really kind of lower side in the standings. Yeah. Uh, and so I think Emerson Hyman does get the start if that is the case. If not, if Ezekiel Barker's good to go, then great, he starts. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Hyman, 
I think he's there uh, so that if it is, then on uh, Wednesday, then Barco maybe uh, gets the nod there. Yeah. But, uh, and I think our strike force. Up top, agree. yeah, yeah. No, uh, no arguments there. It's Petey, it's Joseph. Mm -hmm. You know, that uh, going back to the union game, that goal, I mean, what you, I think what you really saw was Joseph getting comfortable with uh, mm -hmm. playing in the midfield because he starts to move off. Yeah, starts from deep. Yeah. yeah, passing to PD. PD comes back to him. I mean, you're seeing that uh, the chemistry really build because PD has been so good. He was yeah. the player of the month in August. And, yeah. you know, I just think, like, it's all it's all coming together, man. It was yeah, exactly. season right around the corner. It's hard Hopefully, not to feel excited. Exactly. Hopefully, uh, you know, so that was the hiccup uh, against the union. And then hopefully this is where we do make that push so that we are firing on complete all cylinders going into the playoffs. Yeah. But getting into the score prediction, what do you got, man? Yeah, I've been uh, talking this one up. I'm pretty bullish on this score. I think we come out big. I think it's gonna be four nil. I got a hat trick for Joseph. I think uh, Gressel actually, yeah, Ooh, yeah, Hattie it, for it. Joseph. All right. And uh, yeah, I think Gressel actually scores as well. I think Petey probably has like three assists. Maybe one of them's like an MLS assist, but. I mean, yeah, I just yeah. think, I think we take it to him and I think okay. we put away, put away this one. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have it as a you know win and three points as well, but not as bullish. But 3-1 uh, for me, I think uh, Columbus do find uh, some sort of pullback goal, but it is, yeah, we uh, have enough of the goods. We come out motivated enough and hungry enough that, yeah, I mean, that hiccup is just a hiccup. We are absolutely going as just firing as much as we can going into the playoffs and so uh this is a good step in that direction so 3-1 for me 4-0 for uh mark so let us know in the score predictions uh, or in the comments below what your score predictions are and uh yeah that does it for the match preview and remember to subscribe if you haven't already smash that like button and really yeah you uh just if you can share this it'd be fantastic yes you know but anyway for mark i'm aj thank you guys so much for watching hey!